So, let's look at our glowing, and yes. then we'll uh, reassess what we know of 2188. Okay. So, Chihiro Moimura. In order to raise funds, 2188 Moimura sold nanomachine technology on the black market, which led to the infection on the surface and the end of humanity. Yeah, okay, so this is where I'm like, the concept of the black market requires people to exist. Yeah. <laughs> it requires, the concept of a black market- it's Outside of the group. The, the concept of black market requires there be to be a market. Yeah. And for there to be a market, there needs to be people. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, yes, this is essentially what led to that. All right. Um, now, her fundraising. It's interesting because it's like, from before the fall, she wanted this project to go down. Mm -hmm. You know? So, like... But, like, I... No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, let's not let's not get the timeline twisted here. When Kate Aromira asks her why they didn't uh, create a residential district, she says da 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 about terrible turn. A foreman executive of Newman Inc. and a leading figure in nano uh, tech research has a research lab in Sector Four, colony still under construction, and to raise funds, she did that. Okay, to raise funds for her organization. Then, uh, I mean. Like, there was no, like, let's save humanity need prior to her fucking up to begin with. Okay. Right? Okay. Uh, so, she fucking killed everybody. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'd like them, to, uh, I'd, it'd be interesting if they described how or what, because it's like, does 100% of the human population have nanomachines at that point? Are people still born without them? I don't know. At all? No. Yeah. Uh, a. Sikigahara. When the kaiju appear in 1985, Sikigahara rides his motorcycle to the battlefield where the 12 Sentinels are gathered and activates the enhanced first-gen model Sentinel number 11. So he's last. Yep. He was like, yeah, 12 are there. Time to go. Really close to the battle. In 2188, the assassin A. Sekigara was trapped in a room by Morimura while infiltrating Sector 4, but managed to escape by setting off a bomb at the power generator. He then seeks out Morimura to finish her off himself. Yeah. Callous bastard. She is guilty. But yeah, fucking 10 of us left. Time to make it 9. Yeah. <laughs> or more, you know. Just... That's a wild ass decision when your numbers are as dwindling as they are. And then Baby Chihiro showed up. Yep. Responsible for the murder of Miss Morimura. What, what is that about? That is about uh, Goto hanging out with her and them doing their own thing. Because. As far as we know, like, she's gotten more accustomed to the body. She's taking part on the battlefield. She's hanging around everybody on the battlefield and helping, right? We saw her. But now, yeah, she, what, are, what, what, the, what are you up to? Goto, future Goto that is in charge, right? If he's still around. Uh-huh. Could there be an influence? I don't know. I I mean I. Uh, Why well, would we, we he don't know work enough? Baby Morimura to kill. Yeah, we uh, we first of all we don't know anything about young Goto to connecting connections to old Goto. We saw yeah. him watching it himself, and being unfazed by it. But like we don't know enough about where he's at. But he knows a lot, yeah. obviously. Um, but yeah, I think we have him and her as another faction. Unless she's, like, doing her own shit beside him. Besides him. Okay. Morimura learns from 2188 Log that the 2188 Morimura is responsible for the end of humanity. 
fearing that the others will discover this truth, she discreetly dis deletes the log. Moreover, when Mormura links up the to the artificial satellite in orbit, she finds out that the stability of the facility, which is responsible for maintaining the world, is at its breaking point. She then decides to set Operation Aegis in motion to completely wipe out the kaiju, even if it means strand them all in a dead world. Yeah. See, that's the, the interesting thing is the concept of a dead world, right? Like, what is a dead world? It's uh, it's a dead world versus a living world. You're, you're alive, right? Um, admittedly, when you're floating through space, you don't have as much rebuilding capabilities as you would have if you were on a planet. But, like, everything being destroyed and living in the rubble is... In, uh, forever is, is like you know not worse than death mm. so it, it is interesting how they describe that Ida saved his consciousness onto sector zero to prepare for the next loop yeah um Yeah, so he basically ends up doing to himself what he was already doing with Tomi. Yeah. So like he knows all about that 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 uh, that procedure. Aegis system. When all self-defense systems within the sector are activated, the city will be cut off from universal control, which results in chaos and the disappearance of all residents. Is that what happened? Yes. When Mormura was like, I'll shift people yes. out. Yes. The process of activating it cuts off universal control, which makes everybody go away because everyone is being projected from universal control. <laughs> you know? And she was acting like she was saving stuff. Like. In the end, she was just like, ah. Yeah, it can happen. Well, she mentioned it happening, and then she did it, right? Yeah. But it's like, and everyone's like, yeah, okay. But it's like, yeah, no, that's part of the procedure. Because you can't connect to the internet if, uh, well, no, more like, okay, the analogy fell apart. But the point is that, like, if people are just being broadcast from a location, and then the fucking server goes down, well, then, Yeah. Goodbye, people. You know? That's all it is, yeah. The NPC server is down. <laughs> <laughs> You're all alone. Sorry. Oh, was your family on that server? Well, sorry. Uh, good luck. Figure it out. Um, also, uh, take a second to consider that if there's, again, if humanity, like whether the number is 10 or 16, Right, sixteen if it happened before, ten if it happened after, uh, yeah. or, or or four if it happened after. Whatever the case is, there are less than twenty people around on the ship, mm -hmm. and uh, the tragedy occurred, and now we're in the final stretches of what whoever's left. Right, that is the entire breadth of your genetic data. To play with so when people are making copies of their of themselves clones of themselves and putting them in these environments there can't be more real people than the amount of people that were able to donate their data do you understand like the number of the final residents on the ship is the total number of candidates to offer their DNA to create yeah. real human beings. Everyone that's not a part of that ain't a human being. So it's literally that classroom and that's that's your people. You know? And then no wonder it's like, yeah, you're candidates, you're pilots of the Sentinels because you're fucking, you're human beings. And then like no one else is. Because who else, what are, like, unless they're, unless they have a giant pool of gathered, uh, um, DNA from, you know, pre-fall. Yeah. 
but it didn't sound like it. I don't right? think that was ever mentioned. It didn't really sound like it. So I'm assuming that like we're seeing clones of the people that are like on that ship because it's like yeah, that's that's literally what's left, you know. Um, this is a guess. So we have the pilots, all the politics, Tamal Kurabi. When all of the self-defense terminals of uh, when all of the self-defense systems of the terminal are activated, everyone in the city will disappear. Yeah. It just it's just re-emphasizing this. Um, so that would leave. So the dead world would also consist of only the survivors. Yeah, there's no people left. There's no nothing left. It's like just those grouping, just the just the fight, just the Sentinel kids. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, commercial district. Mm -hmm. The headquarters of the SIU is located on the top floor of the building next to the Aoi Police Station. Mm -hmm. So, Baby Morimura having some vengeance in her blood is. Uh, one thing, but like, what are her motives beyond just not wanting to be, not wanting another one around, right? Mm -hmm. What could she be thinking if there's no loops left and if she's aware of that fact, you know? Um, okay, so the colony satellite in orbit. Um, here we go. This is our setting. Uh, the colony under construction up in a satellite orbiting Earth in 2187, once completed, had a diameter of 30 kilometers, docked with multiple giant cylindrical food projection sil uh, silos. This is where Project Art began for the sake of continuing the human species, but is also the source of the nanomachine infection that wiped out humanity. Okay, you know what? Hold on, I was misunderstanding the, the, the funding. The Ark, Project Art began for the sake of continuing the human species, but the wipeout occurred after the existence of Project Dark, then. Oh. So the fundraising was, they, they, so she already wanted Project Arc to be a thing before the fall. And then wow, after, yeah. and then, and then afterwards, it becomes literally like your fucking, your, your, you know, your raison d'etre. Um, so she was working on stuff. She needed more funding. She did she's, some shady shit. Yeah, she she's, sent that to the black market, people, whoever that is. And then the black market, uh, and then and then criminal usage of nano machines becomes like a thing. Yeah. And then through like fucking evil people bullshit and like just pe humans being humans, you can essentially infer that like, yeah, someone finds a way to like essentially create a virus that would spread digitally mm. and then just wipe out people because people do that anyway with on the internet as is why wouldn't the act you know what i mean like if that if that is not fully un uh, uh, uh untouchable completely encrypted to infinity uh information then like when you put shit out on the black market like that and then if people find ways to backdoor things if someone had the ability to again 3d printed nukes right yeah guess people are gonna do that so like I, I I think that's a decent like uh, stretch to consider is like from that step it got out it got into the hands of like the worst people and all it takes is one. Yep. And right? shit hits the fan. All it takes is one. One person who says I want to kill everybody I don't care anymore, you know, or like whatever accidental who knows who knows. But it only takes one. It starts with one. Uh, Project Arc began for the sake of continuing the species, but it's also the source of the infection that wipes out humanity. In 2188, Seiki Gahara infiltrated Sector 4 and set off a bomb on its power generator in order to assassinate Morimura. So that bomb went off in Sector 4, which is where the, the shootout occurred, right? And it affected the generator that managed the power source. Yeah. So, so the, when 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 um, uh, 2188 um, uh, Hijiyama's doing his log, he says that they're they met up in Sector Four. Okay. So and then when with the power and when the power generator blows up, she makes reference to the life support. Yeah. Which okay. is kind of... Yeah. 
artificial satellite in orbit, an artificial satellite that orbits around a planet. After looking at the 2188 logs and figuring out a way to link to the satellite in orbit, Morimura learned about the facility. Morimura states that this artificial satellite is orbiting the real world. This is where the automated factory in Sector 1 is pulling blueprint data for the Dimos from. So this is a separate location. This is different from the Kong? Yeah. Is this Sector Zero? No. Would I that make sense? So. Would it be Unless, another location? Oh. And then that the location is no longer going to be accessible? So, like, they have to literally back up to an, an auxiliary... Like almost like a like a second physical location, almost like a partition. Maybe there's more data info in the sectors. Yeah, I'm about here. to look at that. No, unlike, it's dead center. Yeah, unlike the other five sectors. This yeah, one no, no, no. Like, okay, it yeah. doesn't take up any space. This is unaffected by yeah. loops. Marmara and Tetsuya Ida used it as an evacuation site where they stored their own. Yeah, data. okay, never mind that. So, it's so yeah, it is. Uh, it, it, we, you know, the guess about the center being that is correct, but it is not a physical. Or rather, it is not a place that you can go. It's actually just, it's all data. But this is just, this is literally another uh, thing besides the colonies. Okay. Uh, okay. A facility that houses the entire world. What? <laughs> what is that sentence? That's a lot to drop. Its stability is reaching its breaking point. Once Sector 4 gets taken over by Kaiju, the facility will reset, preventing any further loops. If this were to occur, the reset would wipe all data, including any memories stored on Sector 0. The lives of everyone experienced through time would cease to exist. For good. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, I mean... Are they just referring to the sectors? Because that phrasing is very intimidating, and that picture is fucking... What is that? Weird. And at no point did anyone, like, discuss the existence of something approximating the size of a Dyson sphere, <laughs> right? Uh, which is a, a, a literally turning a factory, uh, uh, creating a factory that's the size of a star that can draw that energy from it. Like, if you have the... No, no, I, no, 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 okay. I, uh, <laughs> the wording of this is, is throwing, throwing me for a loop here, and you, it sounds like. I did not like reading that. Okay. Reggie, I'm not gonna lie, I need your help here. <laughs> I need your help digging, digging through this. I need you. I need those. Dude. I need those gears spinning at at max capacity. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm playing. You know, I'm, sometimes when I'm, you overclock for too long. I know, it but I, done. dude, I can only throw this ball off the wall for so long. Like, and I'm catching it and I'm throwing it again. Like, hit me, <laughs> hit me with what I'm not seeing. Take an outside perspective. Give me, hit, give me something. So the cryptic note for the message service, which A. Sekigara entrusted to Moramura before he lost his memories. Right before she got yep. shot. I guess. Yep. So guess what? You didn't do it, kid. Congratulations. I'm happy. You I'm happy because I had doubts the whole time because you never see it. And I was like, maybe he didn't do it. Well, he just wakes up. The there. old version of him did. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't miss. <laughs> but but you know, but he, yeah, he uh, he wakes up in a classic memento style hijinks situation, and it turns out that there's more to it. Brown note. Yeah, Ida instructed Sekiara to kill Moimura. Um, so all those recordings he did were uh, immediately after. BJ was handed over to him. Right? The thing, though, 
or not BJ, but the the scout unit. Uh, the thing though is, when he suddenly went, I backed up my memories. What was that about? Ida? No. In the middle of that conversation, or Sekigahara himself. In the middle of that conversation, Sekigahara, uh, Ida's like, you don't you don't have your memories. What you but, but well, um um. A says, what use is uh, a contract or what use is a promise or, or whatever, uh, an arrangement that, like, I don't remember, right? And then um, Ida makes a, scar a snark remark about it. And then Sekigahara goes, actually, I backed up my memories and I do remember everything and this is the conversation, right? How did that happen? How did he get his memories? Yeah. Like, did the cryptic note help? And then he heard all of that, and he's like, "Yo, I got my memories." Maybe he was just like trying to pull information from Ida. Okay, so basically, right before he goes into, because this starts with him and Yuki pulling up, mm -hmm. right to the building. So before that occurs. Yeah, so he gets a message here telling him about his original, and then this is the scene where we see them making a deal and talking about the loops, right? This scene here is where we first see them meet up in, um, in 2025. Okay. Do you remember when A meets up with Ida in 2025 and they talk about loops? Mm-hmm. This is what we're looking at, the message. Okay. So between here and here, when he pulls up to the building with Yuki on the bike, which we just played, um, he gets his entire memories back. Yes. And I'm trying to remember if we watched the scene where he got his memories back. Uh, and I'm forgetting it. Timeline. That's what the timeline is for. Okay, let's go check it out. Do you recall anything? Wasn't he at the phone booth at some point? Multiple and times, he yes. Enters the numbers. It's convoluted. Don't worry. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> this guy's telling me I'm not overclocking enough. And he's like, yeah, it's convoluted. Yes, I know. <laughs> Throw that ball on the wall again. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some hay C. How about that? <laughs> Chill with Hijiyama. Okay. Uh, let's see. He ends up finding the girl he was searching for, Natsuno. The data unit shows Seki Gahara a log between himself and the other Mira, as well as a log between himself and Goto. And then they go to the SIU building. So is the implication that, like, it all comes back right here? Hmm. Okay. He's getting memories throughout the this... A girl with braids comes out and pushes him to recall his memories. Happen. It didn't work. Is there a 2188 Okino? Yes, there is. We saw them die. So. Ah, never mind. No, I had a dumb question. You recognize me? No. That can't. Focus. <coughs> Take a good look at. I know you can remember. Persistent, aren't you? It's basic. 
pills, the end. I know it's even in that you managed. Have you been in hot just let to Right, so this scene is remembered. You were on the battlefield too, yet you're not showing any symptoms. They talk about the pills. I could say I'm taking pills to pill. What are you? <sighs> These. I see. These serve as additional code. These aren't going to say. Of course they will. All you're doing is. What about you? There must be some. I'm afraid that. It was about a. I discovered a code. The. I tested it. <sighs> Which resulted in the. That's why I was unaffected. That kid, you don't seem like you've lost your. That's because I transferred my memories to my nano machine, and I was able to create a simulated personality. It carries all the qualities. Let me get this. You're a program that's... Initially, yes. But now that I've been affixed to the brain, I've become the true Tsukasa Okina. Oh, yeah! I completely forgot about this discussion when I was trying to figure out where Okino came from. Oh, Jesus Christ, man! Wow. Yeah. Ugh. Right. There's a whole this this they, they this they describe this whole thing, where they recreate his personality. Ah, uh, God. Right, and that's why all the knowledge is there, even though the body is young. Because the mind was completely wiped, but the information from previous loops is going through the real body. Okay. So it is a real, genuine, um, organic Okino. But Sector 1's... Uh, Sector 1 Okino... No, wait. Uh, I think. I think... It's a genuine Okino body, but Sector 1 Okino's brain is uh, in the nano machines creating a personality, effectively. I think that might be what we're looking at there. Um, and if not, then I guess I'm just wrong. But, like, I, I, I remember when I was trying to put together that, like, uh, here, hold on, let's, let's read this, let's read this. Am I just am I am I going off in the wrong direction there? Because I was like, oh, is that the Sector One Okino that then jumped to uh, later sectors, and then um, is therefore the same or should be the same as Morimura and Ida, right? But we don't know what happened at the end of because they stayed behind and died, mm -hmm. right? So like, if it's as simple as no, that one stayed behind and died. Um, the, and, and and then this is a different one, then why would he refer to himself as being from a different sector when he's talking to Hijiyama? Do you know mm. what I'm talking about? Okay. I'm, I'm not sure what is like the beginning point of Okino. I possess the original Okino's personality and memories. You can't even tell the difference. Yeah. The original Kino is the one that died in the Sector 1. When he sent back uh, uh, scene. Marimura. The, the one that quote-unquote died in the Sector 1 scene. Mm -hmm. Except this is the information. Yeah. Right? Therefore, that's... But you're still not the same. The Okino from before was different. Human beings are constantly evolving. I mean... Unless they're talking about 2188 Okino, which uh, I, I. Whether we retain our memories or not, we're. My goodness, your pursuit of me caused quite the panic. Professor Doji wants to have me restrained. And now that you've caught me, maybe it's time. All right, everything I'm saying is wrong. So what's let's 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 actually read this then. To see if I can get um, back on track here. Um, okay, so 
he talks about his memory loss. And... He introduces the concept of the pills. Mm -hmm. You're not showing any symptoms of memory loss. Because your personality is coming from the nanomachines, which are creating your personality. It's simulated. Okay. You're a program that's simulating Okino. Initially, yes. But now that I've been affixed to the brain, I've become the true Okasa. Uh, Sukasa Okino. All right. Let's use our powers of deductive reasoning here, okay? Okay. So, this person is describing that their nanomachines created a simula simulated personal personality and then that went and overwrote the original personality on the brain mm -hmm. basically making them the original Okino operating in an organic body correct? a brain a brain, a, a brain. it's making reference to the fact that the simulated personality has been affixed to the brain to a real body. Therefore, this is this is the new person. Casa Okino, yeah. Right? Okay. Therefore, if this is what we're looking at factually, then that means there being a body infers by default that this Okino did not go through the same process of jumping in and out of uh, rather the nano machines and the data on them, the personality on the nano machines, hit sector zero and came back out, right? Okay, yeah. That made the, or or whatever the case is, the one the transference of that data was, it happened or what or, or if it didn't, the the blah. Let me <laughs> let me rewind. The fact that there's a brain here means that there's a body there. So that means that the Okino we're staring at is not the same as Ida and Morimura's data ghosts okay right this is this this yeah, it's not a data ghost it's a body affected by nano machines yeah okay so uh we don't know we don't know what happened i'm gonna stop i'm gonna i'm not, okay throw out what i said we literally don't know what happened to okino after that scene occurred right okay in the, in, 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 yep. when, when the bombs went off or, yeah, yeah. When, or rather when when he, he stayed stays behind stayed behind we don't know what happened this okino is an organic being with a brain that has now been replaced with the data of the original Okino. This is what the text on the screen is saying. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, this Okino standing here is not the same as the data ghost that is Ida and um, Morimura who skipped the loops. Yeah. Okay. So now knowing that to be the case, the hypothesis of that uh, that Okino somehow surviving that circumstance we still don't know that right but here's where I'm getting confused okay the Okino in Hijiyama's scene a moment ago when we just played it says makes reference to the fact that that he is from another sector my he, he says from my my original sector yeah right so doesn't specify the number when he says that but that leads me to think i'm like oh are you talking about the sector one where we saw you or you know what i mean the like, older okino the the, uh, the the okino that we see talking to hijiyama there this, this is the same character we're dealing with here makes reference to that moment and says basically like yeah back in my sector or my my original world was destroyed right so I'm just like, okay, what wor what world are you referencing with that line? I would think the 2188. Uh, well, oh, adult uh, Okino and Hijiyama have a relationship in the future, Hijiyama. right? 2188. But that's not what he's referring to. What's going on? And then, then, then this plays out. Oh. 
Okina. Okay. Remember. So cost me medicine. Good. And you're an AI construct. Huh? Is that all? You've neglected to remember some rather important details. Let's try this again. Okino, okay, do you really have... Don't pay him any mind. <coughs> now, concentrate. Try to remember what... Okay, so she's trying... Uh, excuse me, he's trying to get him to jog his memories there. Uh, and that's and again, at some point between these scenes, when he shows up and he has this final confrontation, uh, he's like, "Yo, I got my memories back." Yeah. And then he drops the bomb on Ida, and then he goes, "What the fuck?" And then wins, right? So I, all I was trying to do there and looking at this was just try How to rem try to remember where he got all yeah. those memories from. And she jogged his memory. And uh, but uh, they, but was it like? Uh, it, 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 then it was off camera, right? The moment where he gets it all back, it was off camera. Because I guess moving forward, in he's in all these scenes, he's no longer confused about what's going on. But he's but it's not really being discussed, right? And then like by the time he lands here, he's like, oh, by the way, I've got it all back, so I know what's going on now. Okay. So I'm the, the reason why I was a little bit struggle, like like confused is because we're struggling to remember something that happens off camera. Okay. He doesn't get his memories back in front of us, right? Okay. All right. Fine. Um, as to the last Hijiyama scene that played out, um, yeah, okay, so this is what we just watched. This is the conversation they have. And in this conversation... Lots of lore gets dropped. Mm hmm Stuff that we've seen. What's wrong? I skipped that year. That's actually pain. It's because someone in that time... In other words, that's why they just went straight... Sector 4, which means... No People... Those compatible with... So in the... Well, you, we have no idea. Even then, someone else would just... Anyone implanted any one of them. So even I... Yeah. One guy. Murder every... No more signal. He thought that might save the world. But it... He thought. He thought that might save the world. In brackets. But it won't. Yeah. Why? Right? We don't know the answer to that yet. Nope. But the phrasing of this is like... But it won't. But we don't know why. Right? Okay. If it meant I could, I would gladly. So why do we have who mod is? Like I said, there's besides which, it's the. <clears throat> we don't know much. It's general use and it's got that. That's comparative. Wait. That's the part I don't. Something else is some totally unrelated function. Yeah, I'm gonna go back on. I'm gonna triple back on my own thought and say that I think that 80% uh, usage of the of the uh, interlocutors is probably the life support functions. But since the power was destroyed, right? Mm. Maybe with her dying breath, Morimura was like, "Okay, like use 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 everybody." I, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe they're related. Nothing to do. I maybe they're related. The data it basically uh, just needs to doesn't matter though. It's still a guess. We'll find out shortly. Shortly. One of the universe might have to do. I'd need more. The second, the automated, the factories weren't. They're using them to. That's where this. And the final act would be the thing. Some kind of. Satellite in orbit. Date, they're pulling blueprint data for the Dimos themselves. Even knowing all that, the, are we any closer to saving the world? It's a long shot. If I can figure out this UFO, and it's possible, but yeah, it feels like I'm still overlooking something. Um, when we were trying to, when we were looking at the artificial satellite, um, we might have been overthinking that. Um, it might literally just be a satellite. Well, no, it's the thing that, that, like, 
future Mura, uh, 28188 Mura is floating around in. When he's like, oh yeah, I'm currently floating over Sector 4. And mm. he's talking about floating over the sectors and, and, you know, during all those design conversations. Yeah, okay. So he it just, it might literally just like, I, I, for some reason I was like, oh yeah, there was a separate thing he was in. That's what he was looking at, right? So like, it could just be that. Um, yeah. Okay. Exactly. The UFO's also in Sector 5, which means it's also buried there in 1945. The people there disappeared when Deimos came into contact with it. Same as in my time. Same as in my time. Can, can, do you understand what this line means? Is Like, this is what I'm trying to figure out. Because making reference to your time which is not 1945, and that 1985, in 1985 implies you're from a different time. So I'm trying to I'm yeah. trying to parse what this means, and because the game showed us a version of you in Sector One, I want to connect those two devices, those two pieces of information together. But if that's wrong, then I don't have what I need to figure out what this line necessarily means. Um. If you got nothing on it, then I'll just give up on it and we'll just keep moving forward. But essentially what I'm trying to crack there is like, do we have enough pieces to put together like with what Okino said, whether or not there's a connection between the original Okino or not, or, or, or not. Okay. Right. And if not, then like what put into motion the things that created the personality that this Okino has? Right? Was it simply this Okino um, preemptively making the right choices to preserve his memory uh, prior to g brain overloading? It's possible, right? But that that still doesn't explain why this Okino stopped being a normal child and is totally aware of everything that's going on and has all this knowledge. So this still creates a bunch of questions, you know? If it's a matter of passing the knowledge down from a prior source, a different from a previous Okino, that we see two informed versions of them, okay. then that goes, all right, well then this Okino simply inherited all that knowledge. But if this Okino didn't inherit any knowledge and is not connected to those, uh, those others, the, or the other one I'm describing, then it means that this Okino, I guess, just happens to understand the way the world works but like we're kind of missing what would get them to that point okay or who or what you know what i mean so that's what it is so when we see that okino's learning about everything in the ufo in sector 1 i'm like oh that's the purpose that's the point where that okino doesn't know everything but we see them going what is this place what's happening and you're like oh yeah they're learning about it alongside 426 and 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 morimura you know, but like, if we're supposed to just kind of go like, all right, well, no, that's disconnected. That's another thing entirely. Then I'm, then my brain goes, fine, no problem. What is this Okino's source of knowledge? Mm. Right. What What do we know about the timeline of this Okino to figure out how he got so informed about what was going on here? Right, with this nano machine process. So. Uh, what was their topic of conversation when they were talking uh, in the future, Hijiyama and Okino? Uh, we can go back to it, but it was... Um, the core system had a problem. Yes. 